Let's talk about the home buying process timeline. When you are buying a home, knowing how much time everything is going to take is important. Now, let's, let's begin by saying these are the steps of basically going under contract. I think the home buying process should begin months, several months, three months or more before you actually want to go under contract and buy your home. So if you are thinking about buying a home, uh, you need to go kind of from the dreaming phase to the planning phase, to the implementation phase where you're getting your ducks in a row, getting ready to buy. And then you'll actually make, start making offers, go under contract and go ready to get ready to close. So we're gonna go through that here and discuss the home buying process timeline from A to Z. This is Emily Cressy, your digitally enabled Puget Sound community advisor. So my name is Emily Cressy. I live here in the Shoreline area of North Seattle, and I would love to explain the home buying process timeline to you. I've bought a lot of homes actually as an investor. You might have seen ads, you know, fast cash closing. We can close in seven days. So as a home buyer, it is possible to close quickly, but that's typically not the way it works unless you're dealing with a like a foreclosure or probate or a divorce, some kind of stressful type of sale. So for the typical, you know, first time home buyer or move up buyer shopping on the MLS, this is what we're going to be going over today. So I actually have this document that I'd love to send you a copy of. This is from one of my lenders. And this goes through the lending side of the home buying process, what you need to do to get your mortgage in shape. And I actually have this buyer's guide as well. This is from fall, obviously, but uh, we update them quarterly and you can download that on my website. I'll see if I can throw a link uh, down there and you guys can take a look at how uh, market trends are affecting the home buying process at the time that you're watching this video and that you're ready to move forward with your home purchase. So let's talk about the process of home buying and what that timeline looks like. Like I said, I love to work with people who have a lot of time before they buy. I like to start the conversation early and begin that education process. Typically, people start with the, the broad idea of, I would like to buy a home, but they don't know necessarily where, they don't necessarily know how much they wanna spend, and uh, maybe they don't have a clear opinion of what type of home. Will it be a condo, a town home? Uh, something that's a single family home, a duplex or a fourplex, excuse me. Uh, the sneeze did not come. Okay, so in that case, that's kind of, go, that's the dreaming phase of I have this big idea of a home, but I don't know what I want that to look like. And so when we start talking while they're in that dreaming phase, while well, you're in the dreaming phase, we can start to identify what's important to you. For example, uh, are there children that you need to have space for or an aging relative? Uh, do you want a certain distance uh, to commute to work? Do you have, I had a gentleman who it was very important to him to have space for a pool table in his home because he, he liked the idea of playing billiards. So having an idea of what your values are around the home and starting to flush that out is an important first step of the process and that can take uh, months, sometimes weeks. But uh, when we start to engage in some of these conversations and questions, uh, I think I can shed some light on some things that you may not have thought of. An additional thought here is that uh, we need to go and start looking at homes, I think. I always encourage people to uh, you know, stop the scroll, don't just look online. Let's drive out and see 10 or 15 homes in person without any pressure to make an offer, just as a purely educational exercise. This is something that I do. I real estate brokers like me are in a great position because we get to do this on a regular basis, but we can do it specifically for you. If you're trying to decide between Shoreline and Bothell, let's look at five or 10 homes in each location and see what you can get for your money, what the layout is like, what the, the amenities are like nearby. And there's nothing like being on the streets looking at the homes to get that um, emotional feel and that connection that you know the glamour shots with the wide angle lens just doesn't give you when you're looking online so i think that's really important to um, you know start asking the questions and start visiting homes as an educational activity in the past this has been done a lot through uh, 
visiting open houses and that type of a thing. But um, I think going specifically to the home, any and all homes that are listed and just visiting them as an educational exercise is very important. But you can decide how much time you want to spend on that. Um, you know, it could be a week, it could be months. So again, you know, let's start the conversation early. Let's work on the education. When you are moving toward being ready to go and start making offers, we'll want to get you in, in front of somebody that can help you with financing. So again, uh, talking with a mortgage broker or a bank about uh, how much you can afford, how much you'd like to spend, uh, what kind of down payment if you're putting 20% down. Most people do not put 20% down. Uh, in this market, there are a lot of people who uh, come in with 10% down or something smaller using their VA or their FHA benefits, um, able to get in with less cash than uh, maybe they had thought or maybe more. You need to have your down payment and you need to have some for closing costs. So what does that look like for you? Uh, the mortgage broker will help you get that information. What are your monthly payments going to be? Are the low interest rates going to help you out? The mortgage broker will help you get that information too. And what typically happens is they'll say, you know, you're pre-approved to buy this much, you know, let's say 700,000. And so then you, you might say, well, you know, if I bought 700,000, my payments would be more than I would prefer to pay. So I'm going to look for something a little less, maybe 600 or 650 to keep my payments where I'd like them to be. So that will give us a lot more data about the narrow band on pricing where you'd like to stay. So the next thing to take a look at is uh, the timeline for buyers when you actually are going under contract. So let's talk about that specifically. Uh, the way it works right now, uh, we are in a very fast moving market. Uh, homes come up on the market, they go under contract the same day in some cases, or uh, the sellers will say, you know, I'm gonna give everybody a week so everybody has a chance to go and look at it. And so lots of buyers go and look at it. The ones that love it kind of get into this feeding frenzy situation, maybe competitive offer situation, and they make what they consider to be the strongest reasonable offer for them to be able to buy the property. And so one of the things that can be variable on here is uh, some of your time frames. So let's say you submit an offer and it's accepted and we're just kind of using standard you know, run of the mill types of terms. What happens once you go under contract and the clock is ticking from going under contract to closing? The big picture timeline is about one month. So from the time that you go under contract to the time you close is typically one month and the limiting factor tends to be the lender. The lender has a lot of paperwork and things they have to get together. They have to check on your background and all that good stuff. So, you know, the fastest they could maybe do is three weeks. If you're not getting a loan for whatever reason, maybe you're buying the house with an inheritance or a private loan from a family member, then you could potentially uh, offer to close more quickly. But let's say we're, we're doing it with one month there. So the first thing we look for is uh, 48 hours, it's two days, you need to get in your earnest money deposit. This is cash that you're sending to the escrow company, usually via wire, uh, wire transfer, and you're saying, you know, here's my skin in the game. I've got cash. If I walk away from this deal for no reason, not specified in the contract, then uh, the seller can keep that earnest money deposit as, you know, my I'm sorry money, or I'm, you know, thank you for letting me take a look at the property money, whatever you want. But typically, uh, you know, there's no magic number. You as the buyer can offer the amount of money that you'd like there. Uh, the smallest that I've seen recently is uh, 2,500. Someone was coming in with a no money down VA loan. They didn't have a lot of cash available. They tied up and they closed uh, with only 2,800 as an earnest money deposit. On the other end of the spectrum, I've seen big earnest money deposits, 20,000, 25,000 to say like, whoo, you know, I'm a big player. I'm really serious about this. And, you know, I want this property. I've got the cash to close. Now, if they did decide not to buy the property according to their contingencies in their contract, they would get that money back. But it's just a way of kind of coming in strong. If they do buy, all that money is credited toward the ultimate purchase of the home. So it doesn't cost you anything unless things go south. We try to never lose the earnest money. No one likes that. So uh, 48 hours to get your earnest money in is the, the typical first deadline use $5,000 as a placeholder for your earnest money if you're not sure what that should be. 
Um, the next deadline is typically the inspection. And I like to have the inspection happen fairly quickly. So within four or five days, you would have gotten your inspector out there, 300 to 500 for the inspection, depending on the size of the property. You pay the inspector to get out there. He takes a look at the property and provides you a big long report, 50 page report full of photographs. We review the report together and ask the seller to fix anything or uh, give us money or just say, well, they're not gonna do any repairs, but at least now we know what we're working with. So the inspection contingency four or five days is the next big deadline. Some people waive their inspection contingency, especially if they've had the opportunity to do an inspection before the offer, or if the seller had an inspection done, then you may waive that and you may not hire your own inspector. You might've already seen an inspection report and not need to do that after you're under contract. There's typically uh, some language in the, the financing contingency that says you will also have applied for your loan within a certain number of days after you've gone under contract. But most of you who will be working with me as buyers will have already applied for your loan and gotten that pre-qualification or pre-approval letter before we go into contract so that we know um, that you are, you're gonna be fine with your financing. Uh, so we've got the financing contingency and then we go for the appraisal contingency. So once we kind of clear the inspection hurdle, we call your lender and say, we need you to order the appraisal. So the lender will order the appraisal, uh, which costs seven or $800, it's typically paid at closing. And the appraiser will go out and either drive by the property or go inside it, depending on what the bank feels comfortable with. And they'll also, just like a real estate agent would, look at other homes that are for sale and have sold recently and try to determine the market value of the property. Now, typically, the market value will be almost the same as the contract price, if not exactly the same. But if the contract price has been bid up really high, let's say the home was listed for 550 and now you're selling it for 600000 the appraiser has to make the decision of whether that's really um, a good market price for the property or if he only thinks it's worth 575. So if the property does not appraise, then um, you have some options. You can walk away, you can try to drop the price, you can try to get the seller and the buyer to split the cost of that extra. It's, um, it's a point of contention. So we always hope that the home will appraise for the contract price. And typically, it usually does. That's not typically a problem, but it can be a risk, especially if you try to roll in, you know, sellers covering the closing costs for the buyer and other things like that. So after we've met the appraisal contingency, then it's pretty much a hurry up and wait. Things are in the hands of the bank at that point, and they may be collecting additional information from you, uh, continuing to confirm employment and uh, just getting their paperwork lined up so that uh, three days before the closing date, they can provide you with a closing statement. And this, you should have seen a copy of it before, but it basically says who is paying what for the closing costs and um, how much cash you will need to come to the closing with. So you'll need to have money for your down payment and your closing costs ready to wire uh, through your bank on the day of the closing so that they have the confirmed funds in the account before they release the ownership and give you the keys. Uh, so again, and that final closing date is usually about a month after you've initially gone under contract. So the exact dates and timings of all of these things will depend on what you write in your contract. So this is something that's uh, not necessarily standard. There may be some common practices in your area, but any given buyer can propose to the seller what he would like to do. And in fact, even though it's traditional to take occupancy the day of closing, you could always negotiate to let the seller stay in the property for a little bit longer after closing. A lot of sellers like that because it helps give them a little bit more time to move and find their next home. So that could be a concession that you offer them in order to induce them to work with you over a different buyer who's not gonna give them that time. So I hope this gives you a better idea of the time frame involved, basically from the day that you find your property and get it under contract to the day you close is about a month. 
but I always encourage my clients to start uh, weeks, if not months in advance of that so that they can be educated and prepared uh, knowing about the marketplace and able to make an excellent decision for that. My goal is to empower you to make your own excellent choices with knowledge, advice, consultation. So even if you are months or even years away from that fun and exciting day when you will find and buy your your eventual property, I would be happy to talk with you and advise you, answer questions and ask you a few questions to help you start thinking about what's going to be involved in making your real estate purchase transaction a success. So please reach out to me. I am always available to help you. My name is Emily Cressy and I am here to serve.